repentance. God, it doesn't belong in my life. I'm sorry. I'm asking you to forgive me on the basis of what Jesus did at Calvary, and God will forgive you. Does that mean you will never be harassed by it? No, it doesn't mean that. Does that mean that the Holy Spirit within you will enable you to overcome that? Yes, it does. But listen, after time of asking God to overcome that in your life, and that you, you will to lay it down every time it pops up in your life, you will to lay it down and ask God to purify your thinking and make you a godly man or a woman. And then there's some things you live and die with, no matter who you are and how godly you may be. It depends on what God planted in your life. Now, listen to what he says. He says, for example, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows to the Spirit uh, will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Now, then he says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we'll reap if we do not grow weary. Now, what is he talking about? Well, think about this. And I think about this as pastors, for example. Here's a pastor who comes to a church. It's a small church. Maybe have 50 or 75 members, maybe 100. He's there year after year after year, and somehow he spends his life in that little church, preaching the Word of God, teaching people, never have a big congregation, never live in a big house, never have a big salary. True to God. He puts up with cantankerous deacons. He puts up with people uh, who say, well, we want to keep him humble, God, and uh, we'll, you keep him humble, we'll keep him poor. And... Uh, <clears throat> And giving him a hard time. They don't want to grow, and so, but he stays in there and he's faithful, loyal to God. Here's what he's saying He's saying, In due season, we will reap if we do not grow weary. And I think of it also a godly people, for example, who don't have much, they never have had much in life. Nobody knows them particularly for any significant thing. But they live a godly life. They know how to pray. They live, love the Word of God. They go to church. They tithe their income. Don't have much to give, but they tithe. Live a godly life and come to the end of their life and look back and think, well, Lord, besides living a Christian life, I don't know how much I really accomplished in life. But they've been faithful to God. Paul said, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season your crop's coming in, and it'll be a great crop. Now, if anybody had a right to say that, the Apostle Paul did. And I think about uh, 2 Corinthians especially, uh, what he said in this fourth chapter in the first verse. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. And then if you, you could come down to earlier, later, later verses, ninth verse, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. You go to the 11th chapter. And he talks about five times I've received 39 lashes and shipwrecked, stoned, and all the things. And, and then you turn, for example, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the 58th verse. Here's Paul, who had a thousand reasons for being disheartened and want to give up. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. So, what is he saying to us here? He's saying, for example, if we will trust him and uh, we will feed our spirit. Now, watch this, because I'm going to ask you at the end, so I'm giving you a little warning now. Beginning today, in this coming week, when any thought comes into your mind that has anything to do with your lifestyle or who you are as a person in character, before you accept that thought, ask yourself the question, now is that going to contribute to my spirit or to my flesh? Is that going to contribute to my eternal life, speaking of quality, or is it going to contribute to my destruction? Is it going to contribute to the corruption of my life? And we should teach our children to do the same thing. In other words, when you attempted to look at something, ask yourself the question, what, what contribution is this going to make to me, to my flesh or to my spirit? When somebody wants to tell a dirty joke, say, look, I got something to tell you. You can say one of two things. You know it's dirty. You just say to them, you know what? I don't want to hear that. That doesn't fit who I am. What do you mean doesn't fit who you are? It doesn't fit who I am. I don't want that in my life. It's time for believers to stand up, stop apologizing for being a follower of Jesus Christ, and hate sin. 
So Paul knew what it meant to reap. Listen, this was God's choice servant. The theology that we understand and believe today, most of it came from the Apostle Paul. They chased him down. They persecuted him every way. And he goes from one prison to the other. And finally is beheaded. You say, well, that doesn't, doesn't look like he reaped much. Let me tell you what he reaped. He reaped the awesome fruit of multiplied millions and millions of people who've been saved by reading his epistles, millions and millions of people whose lives have been radically changed by reading his epistles. You see, we think reaping something good has got to be something material or something that's wonderful. Look what he reaped. Every single one of us is a part of the fruit of the life of difficulty, hardship, pain, suffering, and death because of what he believed, and every single one of us has reaped the rewards of it. What do you think his reaping would be in heaven beyond our comprehension? So he says, look, he says, don't be weary in doing what's right. Don't be weary in doing what's right because God will honor that. And I remember at times when my kids have come to me earlier in life and somebody was giving them a hard time in school or whatever it might be and about what they believe. And I said, look, you just keep on believing what you believe and watch what God does in your life. And then you also watch what God does in their life. And you'll be grateful to God. You did what God wanted you to do no matter what they entice you to do. We live in a world of people who are totally deceived deceived by Satan's lie and by their friends and by their enemies and mocking God about who he is and at the same time what they don't realize. If you and I could see on the inside of those persons, here's what you'd see. Their heart disintegrating. Their whole internal being disintegrating, almost like as if ash on the inside because they're dying and do not realize it. And one day, the Bible says, the wages ultimately of sin is death. Physical death, spiritual death, eternal death. So if you feed the flesh in your life and you don't feed the spirit in your life, you lose your reward. Because listen to what he says. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Then he says, so then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially those who are the household of faith. So think about it. He says, all of us have an opportunity. And what's our opportunity? All of us have the opportunity to sow seeds into the lives of other people. Whether it's our friends, our family, our children, our grandchildren, people we work with. We have the opportunity to sow seeds into their life. You say, well, how am I going to do that? Well, sometimes it's a matter of saying, when they tell you that they're sick, I'm going to be praying for you. Boing. Prayer. Somebody else comes along and says something about God loving them. Boing. And so little by little, people get fed truth. And God begins to take that little seed that you dropped. Little seed that you dropped in their life. And what does he do? He will lead other people into their lives to drop further seed. You see, if I should ask you, how did you get saved? Well, I talked to so-and-so. And that's how I got saved. You may have talked to so-and-so or listened to this sermon, that, but you can't even count how many seeds got sown into your life for the most part, for most people. There are times when somebody comes out of nowhere and never heard anything and they get saved. But for the most part, all of us got seed fed into our life. And I can think about how many times my mother fed me seeds of desiring to be righteous and godly and holy and, and thinking about the pastor that I listened to and the seeds he sowed into my life and, and, uh, and my grandfather, big seed he sowed into my life. Listen, you're either sowing or you're receiving. You can sow and receive, but you can't sow wickedness and reap righteousness. You cannot. And so the issue is, what kind of person do you want to be? He says, look, he says, we are to impact. We have an opportunity to impact people for good. So, you, so let's just forget everything about the bad seed for just a moment. Then you take this same passage of Scripture, just preach part of it and say, you know what? Remember, 
Whatever we, whatever we sow, we'll reap what we sow more than we sow, later than we sow. And put it all on the positive side. Talking to people about Jesus, giving out tracts, pointing them to the radio, television sermons. In other words, think about all the good seed that you can sow out there. And he says, look, don't, don't, don't think you're going to sow all that good seed and God ignore it. He's not, you're, not, you're not mocking God, but in other words, you don't realize that God sees all the little good things. For example, if you reach down to pick up something from some little, little old lady or some little old man who can't do it, what are you doing? You're being kind. You say, well, God's not interested in that. That's exactly what the fruit of the Spirit is. Love, joy, peace, kindness. And if you look at that fifth chapter and, and just notice what Paul says, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That is, all of us have the privilege of feeding into other people's lives things that build character and godliness and righteousness and holiness into their life. And let me ask you a question. What greater thing can you do? You can give them a lot of money and they can die and go to hell. You, you can send them to college, they can die and go to hell. You, you can do a lot of things for people that bring them no real, genuine, lasting fruit. But when you feed them the things of God and the qualities of Jesus of kindness and gentleness and goodness and, and forgiveness and praying for them and talking to them about the Lord and what God has done in your life, you are feeding those persons' spirit and you may forget it, and they may forget it for the moment, but one of these days, God will have used you to reap a great harvest in them. So I ask you this question. In any given day, are you feeding your mind, your soul, your spirit, your life? Are you feeding that part of you that wants to act independently of God, the flesh? Are you feeding yourself things that satisfy the flesh, supposedly? Are you feeding your life those things that are building you up, that are making you godly, that are making you different, that are making you like a living well of awesome spring of water? Food, spiritual food that's making a difference in their life. Are you feeding yourself and feeding others the kind of truth that will ultimately determine their eternal destiny. Do you realize how powerful your life is? What an impact you can have that will, listen, make an eternal difference in somebody's life. Don't be deceived. Don't be misled. Don't mock God by thinking that you can live ungodly and get away with it. Listen, not that I say you can't. God says you cannot. But neither can you live a righteous, godly, holy life and it go wasted and not reap a crop. Yes, you will. And it is my prayer that if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, remember this, you're already sowing seeds. You're already being corrupted. You're already cheating yourself out of the rewards of heaven that God has in store for you once you trust him as your Savior. You may say, well, I don't believe any of that. Remember this, that's your privilege. But it does not change the truth. The irrevocable, unchangeable law of the living God which says, you will reap what you sow, more than you sow, later than you sow. And what you do by making choices, you choose the kind of crop you're going to reap in the life that you're going to live and the judgment before which you'll stand. Father, thank you for teaching us the truth of your word. And I pray that every person who hears it will take it to heart because it is eternal truth. And that you will change their attitude, their actions, and that you'll help them to see instead of being a detriment to other people, they can become an awesome asset through sharing the righteousness that is within them, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray.